Okay. Hello, everyone. How are you feeling today? Tired? You tired? Yes. A morning classes today. What what course? Huh? Chemistry lab. So you already doing some experiment? Oh no. Oh not yet. Okay. Okay. Online quiz. Oh, online quiz. Okay. <laughs> How about the result? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Actually, um, maybe before I start the lecture, uh, I just uploaded uh homework for calculus. Okay. I hope this can help you to prepare your quiz. So your quiz uh, will be, I will upload the link around maybe Saturday morning okay, or, or Friday night. Okay, uh, You will have, uh, I think, a few days, maybe three days or three to, yeah, three days. So Friday until uh, Monday night, probably, or, or maybe, maybe Monday, Monday morning, okay? But maybe night, it will be okay for you. So you can choose which day you are uh, prefer to work on the quiz. Uh, it's just uh, using an online platform. Uh, when you enter the quiz, uh, you get you need to read out the instructions, okay? like uh, how you name your name, student ID, and so forth. And then each question will be um, they they will they will have the time limit for each question, uh, ranging from around one minute to uh, 10 minutes. Okay? It depends on the cap, uh, question type. So if the question is uh, maybe need more times for some some calculation, I, I think I, I'm preparing around five to 10 minutes, yeah, five to 10 minutes. And of course, this quiz is you can prepare any materials you can find, any books, notes. Okay? Uh, my suggestions, to uh, before the quiz, you can prepare maybe one paper and then you can summarize all the things you need. It's only chapter one, only function about function. The quiz only function, the only function. But your homework is may include a little bit chapter two just for your uh, exercise, just a little bit qu uh, questions. Homework is around seven or eight questions, so it should be okay. Okay, uh, and. The deadline for homework is, um, I think, Sunday. Sunday. So I think you can make your homework, prepare for a quiz, and uh, do the quiz when the link is uh, uploaded. Okay. I will mention later on the Moodle. Okay. So please update on on the Moodle system. Okay. Okay. I think we can start uh, and begin with this. Um, squeeze theorem that we left from yesterday's class. So from yesterday's class, we are able to at least to see the geometrical form from the uh, the circle and triangle and find out how to correlate the sine theta over theta and use it in a geometric proof to see the relations between. Uh, so we make out a functions out of this uh, triangle and that is a function sine theta over theta and we define all the things in the geometrical overview and replace them with function of theta okay like for example we get the theta we get the sine theta we get the tangent theta and then we take sometimes to uh, to rewrite all the forms and to make the sine theta over theta let me give you another few I think it's, it's I think much more easier to look at. Uh, so instead of using length, we are going to look the uh, area, okay? the area, the area of the triangle. Okay, so so, so we can compare them. Okay. So let me go to the next page, and this is the same same picture. You will see that we have several triangles, right? We have several triangles. Now, to make it more uh, Similar with what we have done uh, yesterday, 
so let me just make some uh, notes on the triangle of a o b okay so a o b maybe i will write down this is the triangle yeah more or less although it's not really the same but this is just a uh, illustration of our uh, o a b right and it has the the height b c okay the height is b c so if you want to to find the area of this triangle is how or let me write the general triangle area base and then height right okay now the area of aob is how okay and according to the triangle the base is oa and the height is bc right and we know that the oa is our radius right oa is radius which is equal one and bc what is bc bc we have done describing in terms of sine theta right so we can write down the same thing so let me write maybe here uh, bc is sine theta okay. so the area of aob is half sine theta okay that's, that's the first one the first function that we might need to observe okay now another triangle that we are going to compare with is the big triangle that has the ad so a uh, a o d okay as we know the ad right the ad is the tangent right from yesterday's class or if you look at this it's it's a tangent right this is one this is uh, ad so tangent theta is ad over one or we can say ad is tangent theta now the same approach we are going to evaluate the area of aod so half and then oa and then ad so we get that this is how tangent theta okay, let me mark this okay what else do we need for the for 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 this uh function because remember our goal is to make out the squeeze theorem Okay. The squeeze theorem needs at least three, right? Three functions. Okay, we have the big triangle, we have the small triangle. Now we need the the, the one in between. Okay, the one in between. So if we look on this this triangle here, now focus A O D this one, right? And A O B this one. Now in between A O B and A O D, there is some sector this the, the pizza slice okay that is in between aob and aod right so if we can write down uh, that the triangle aob is less than triangle not triangle sector sector aob and aob is less than the triangle aod now within this inequality we have three now and we can now focus on looking at the Swiss here or before that maybe we can look the sector the sector AOB so the sector we can take some graphs maybe that's the sector uh, A O B or maybe maybe write with black to make it clear 
the sector A O B. How to find the area? Okay. The area of sector. We are going to use the ratio from the angle, right? We have angle theta divided by the total circle. Angle is 2 pi. Multiply with this. the area of the circle is pi r squared. Or r is just 1, so we can just remove. Or we can just ignore. And we see that this will be equal to half theta. So area of sector AOB is half theta. Now this is three functions that we we need for the squeeze theorem. Okay. Okay, now by using this inequality here, we are going to write the triangle AOB is half or sine theta over 2. And the sector is theta over 2. And AOD is tangent theta over 2. And we, sh we, we need to make sure all of these are a positive, right? Because it's in the area. And we are um, calculating the length. Okay. Now we can simplify it. Remove 2 from the equations. And again, we are going to multiply with uh, 1 over sine. And the similar way, we are going to have uh, reciprocals the inequality. So this will be 1 theta over sine. And this will be 1 over cos. So we can write 1. This becomes sine theta over theta. This becomes cos theta. Or we can write cos theta I was still and similarly we can include the limit limit as theta going zero limit as theta going to zero And we get this the same uh, conclusions that is because limit is equal one and limit is one, then limit sine theta over theta is one by the squeeze theorem. And now, because of this proofing, the sine theta over theta or sine x over x, if you have limit as x going to be 0, it will be equal 1. That will be our definition. So definition. So now we have definition. That is, if we have limit as x approaching 0, and you have a function sine x over x, this will be equal 1. And sometimes it's all, it can be also useful to simplify our limit. If you have a trigonometric and you can make it into sine x over x, then you can make it into 1. Okay.
some applications on this limit. Okay. If we have some trigonometric functions, okay, let me give you just this example here. So limit, we have a limit sine minus cos, uh, 1 minus cosine x over x. Do you still need to write the, the, the above page or it's okay? Do you still need to write this? This part? No? Okay, try to compute this limit. Okay. The clue is you can use the sine x over x equal 1. Yes, 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 yes. That's the, the first step, yeah. All right. So first you need to multiply with the conjugate, the 1 plus. Okay? So you have 1 minus cos, and you need to multiply with 1 plus. Why you need to multiply with that? Because if we multiply, we are going to have 1 minus cosine squared, okay? which we can rewrite as sine squared. Okay. Okay, so practically, let me give you a multiple of this. Okay. And then this part becomes one minus cosine squared x. This x one plus cos x. Okay. Okay. Now what what's happened now? Now we are going to look the first the numerator. We are going to get sine squared x x. Okay. And remember, okay, in limit we can separate limit. Okay. We can separate limit. Okay. If we have a fractions and maybe we have some like a combinations that we can separate, and then we need to separate them. Okay. Maybe we can find another way that is uh, easier. So let's separate sine squared. I will separate become sine and sine. Okay, so we'll have sine x over here, and the other one is here. And in the bit, we can separate the limit like this. Okay. The last part becomes 1. And the other part, if we take here, it's 0. If we take here, it's become 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So 0 over 2, right? 0 over 2 is 0. So 0 multiplied with 1, it's 0. So, whenever you find some limit that approaching zero, and then you, you can find some trigonometry, if you can, for example, rewrite in terms of sine x over x, you can force out one okay, out of the um, equations. And basically, this is one way to, to solve. Okay? Instead of using maybe another trigonometric identity, this is one way, one way to solve.
Okay. Okay, any question? If not, I'm I'm going to um uh, continue on uh, next sessions which which are uh it's about the precise definition of limit. Uh, this section is um a little bit weird at the glance because uh we are going to prove something that intuitively we already know. Okay. So let me let me give you explanations. Okay. So uh, precise definition of limit. So the limit definition that we have in the introduction of limit that is for we call the intuitive one. So we are looking at when we approach x, so some a, and then we see the function is also approaching to some l, and we we conclude that the limit as x approaching a of some function of x, it will become equal to l. That's intuitively we using the graph, we using the table, we using some trial and error numerical methods, and we are going to prove that oh, we have some value. Okay. But the question is why we need, still need this precise definition. We are not sure that when we act, when we have x approaching to a, how close x to a. So that is actually what we are going to do here. So we are going to somewhat proving how exact value, how precise the, the distance between x to a, so that fx is close to l. So that, that's how we are going to, to deal with. Okay. But then, then uh, my, my, my suggestions okay, do not make this in terms of like, because usually we, we, comp we compute the numbers. This is something that still abstract but it's it's going to be uh it's going to be exact in in math okay so it, it's 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 not something like how close to distance it's not like we find the numbers but we need to prove that there is a number that is close to some some to close something okay? to, to, to make it really really in gap it's really small okay so let me give you an uh, uh an example okay so we have let's say we have f of x we have piecewise. Let's give the uh, exception here for the domain, and this will be okay. So basically, what what's going on here is probably the line will have hole, right? At the x equal three, that that will be a hole, and and at x equal three, it has another point. So I hope you, you get the, the idea. So what this uh, what this piecewise going to do? If we take the limit as x approaching three, according to what we have in the, the previous studies. Okay? So if we have f of x here, then of course, if you look at the graph, if you just plug in the three to the first uh, line equations, this will be equal to five, right? It will be equal to five. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is first maybe asking how close, uh, how close to three does x have? So that f of x um, let's say differs with some small gap from 5 by less than let's just say 0 0.1 just an illustration or maybe 0 0.01 okay or we could just say on any small number here any small number So, the distance that we are going to find, let's say we have the distance for x and 3.
this will equal to something, okay, let's say the delta, within this range, the implications is the distance between the function and 5, or the function with L, okay, and then actually it's any number, but let me just write 5 according to example, is less than 0. Point, that's maybe 0. 0.1, okay, maybe to make it easy to calculate, maybe this will be 0. 0.1. So if we try to look at this distance, okay, the distance, if the distance is positive, then x should not be 3. And it concludes that the distance less 0 0.1 if the distance is in between positive number delta. Okay. Okay, now, if, let's say the delta is some number uh, 0 0.1 over 2 or 0 0.05, okay, then we can see that um, if the distance between this x minus 3, between x and 3, is less than 0 0.05, okay, then... The distance between this and in f of x is 2x minus 1, 2x minus 1, minus 5. This will be equal to 2x minus 6. Okay. And from here, we could see that it's actually, we can see the correlations that this will be related to less than 2, 0 0.05, okay. which we are supposedly to get that this will be equal to 0 0.1. Okay. And that is, that is, the distance, this will be true if, Zero point zero five. Right? So the the distance, the small the small distance delta is given by delta is equal zero point zero five. That when we try to look at this delta, it can prove that it's it's small enough to make the statements true okay so if if x is within a distance of 0 0.05 from from 3 okay from 3 then f of x will be within a distance of 0 0.1 from 5, okay? So if we take some graphs to see,
So let's say we have zero. Let's say three is there. And five is here. Maybe let me make smaller to make it easy to. Three is here. Five is here. Okay, that's our graph. Oh, I think it should be around here. Okay, what does it mean? It means that the delta is probably small here. Let's say this is the delta here. So this will be 3 minus delta, and this will be 3 plus delta. And the, the sentence above the explanation is saying that if we have this delta, it will also correlate with our f of x. So this will be having uh, 5 minus some number, small num also a small number we call the epsilon. Okay. And this also plus epsilon. Let me, let me write here that the distance is less epsilon if and we prove that the delta should be epsilon over 2 to prove that it's it is within the, de the same distance. Now we can write in terms of 3 minus delta less than x less than uh, 3 plus delta. And x should not be equal to 3. So if we have this, then we can write. So what's the deal with this? Okay, what's the deal with this? And what what will the typical questions on, on uh, this precise definition? The typical question usually is just to proving some limit with precise definition, which means what we are going to prove is we are going to look for the delta. And what the delta will will relate with the epsilon, and we need to find those uh, relation, relations relations between delta and epsilon. If we can find the relations and we put the, the confirmations and we confirm that it's true, it's proving the limit is true, then we finish the uh, proofing. So I will give you some concept of this precise definition, okay? But maybe the the application, maybe next week I will uh, find. So I will after the precise definition, we move to continuity first, and we can review both of them uh, next week, okay? And because we, uh, I think already end of September, and I think we we have a slight delay on our schedule, maybe slight on one or two meetings so i think uh, there will be some parts on chapter three that i need to skip so one or two two sections i will skip okay. I, I will mention later okay now let me let me give you the, the the concept first okay let me give you the concept first so definition 
for uh, precise definition or precise limit. Let f be a function defined on some open interval. that contains the number is let we take a a and perhaps its exceptions also a means that maybe a whole there will be a whole then the limit of function x as x approach a is l or we say limit okay now, the precise definitions need to define how close x to a and how close f of x to l. That's the, the, the precise definition. So, so, if for, so this will be true for every number, let's say that we have a positive epsilon, there is a number delta also positive okay. such that this epsilon and delta makes this uh, inequality so if zero then So in practice, what we are seeing in this precise definition is we are going to find the correlation, okay, the relation between delta and epsilon. When we put that in our equation, we prove the functions is in between this L and the epsilon. Okay. So the, the goal is to find the delta, okay, to find the delta. How much the delta so that when the delta is plugged in into the equation, it will um, confirm the, the epsilon. Okay, confirm the epsilon. So, so delta at epsilon, it can be anything. Okay. But delta should be, has a, a, it should have the, the relations with the epsilon. And the, uh, we can also look on what it is in terms of the graph. Okay. So what, what it means is if we change the delta, okay, if we change the delta, for example, let's say the delta is here. Okay, this is a delta. Delta is here. Okay. So if we make delta smaller bigger if we take a look on what we have in our um, uh, relation with this l the epsilon also change right the epsilon also change so it will also changing the the epsilon here if we change the delta okay so delta is supposed to be uh let's say let's say if we take this okay this is the range it has uh, some range here so we can take Maybe epsilon here and epsilon here. Okay. And it has some some value that can be 
uh, can be changed okay, according to the delta. Okay. Okay, let, let me give you a typical work on, on the precise definition. So proof, proof limit as x approaching 3 for x minus 5 is equal to 7. Okay. So this is a, a typical or a precise definition. So of course, if we are just, uh, if we just compute the limit as usual, we know that we plug in 3 to inside the function for x minus 5, 12 minus 5 is 7, right? But the question is, proof this is going to be true. Okay. So it seems confusing, right? But it's actually asking, asking what kind of the delta that when you when you are using that delta, you will get also the epsilon. Okay, so we need to break out these functions and make it the delta inequality and the epsilon inequality. Okay. So first thing is we make out the uh, the, the we we make this. Uh, Wordings, okay, so this is we call the, the, the first analysis or the preliminary analysis. So we say that this is going to be our uh, statement, okay. Then, so this is f of x, right? This is l. So f of x minus l, we write 4x minus 5 minus 7 is less than epsilon. So what we are going to do is basically we find some numbers of delta and when we put that delta we are going to prove that this is true so that we can prove our limit is true. Okay. okay. And then we see from the we so we start from here, the epsilon here, to see what kind of structure it has. Okay, or is there anything that can be easily uh, uh, confirm. Okay. We see that from here it's 4x minus 12. Okay, it's less than epsilon. And you'll see that it can be factorized, right? It can be factorized. So we can factor out 4. Or we could just maybe directly factor out 4 and x minus 3. So from this relations, we see that we can see that the x minus 3 should be less than epsilon over 4. Okay. So precisely, the delta should be epsilon over 4 so that we can prove the statement. Okay. So, so, so this is the first part, uh, the first part we call preliminary statement. And we are choosing the delta. Choose the delta. So assume delta is epsilon over 4. Now, if 0 over less than delta. And we see that then the 
statement so f of x minus l or maybe uh, let me write in the next page uh, I think I need to write all of this let me copy okay I hope you don't mind you don't mind copy here to make it more clear so if then the 4x minus 5 minus 7 this will be equal to 4x minus 12 this will be equal to 4x minus 3 and this will also less than 4 delta or in our case here this will be equal to epsilon over 4 which means it's, it's our epsilon so it's proof that it's it fits in our statement that the delta should be epsilon number four. Okay, so it's true. It's true that delta should be epsilon number four, and thus, if zero x minus three less delta, then. 4x minus 5 minus 7 is less than epsilon. Therefore, by precise definition of limit, limit x approach 3, 4x minus 5, this is equal 7. Okay, so this is true. Okay, so some of what you're, you're, what you're doing here is not a typical calculations or any, uh, any computation problem in mathematics where you need to find a number and then just choose, okay, this is correct, this is true. But this is just to see that to make, it our, to make our statements true, we need to find how close the, the distance or the, the, the delta. Okay? And we need to assume that the delta should be in our case here, it should be epsilon over 4. Okay. So usually, if we are going to prove, for example, this kind of uh, limit, well, the limit is they have line equation. For line equation, as you may see the pattern, usually it will turns out that the delta and epsilon, they will have some constant. Okay? They will have some constant. Okay? Either maybe uh, epsilon defined by some constant or, or anything similar to that. So I think we can take a break for a while.
Okay, let's go back to the lecture. Okay. Okay, another uh, another typical proving in uh, in precise English limit is uh, something that maybe let me write the question proof uh, limit x approaching three x squared equal nine. It's just like we know that if we plug in three, it's supposed to be nine. But we need to make sure that we are we are able to use our precise definition we we have to relate the, the, some some small numbers delta okay, and then it will fit the whole equation well in reality although this precise definition of limit is not really practical because it's it's uh it's actually uh, taking some parts of our we already know intuitively the result well if we um let's say focus on more of engineering problems that it's not really practical okay? and uh, but if we want to know more uh, the uh, the science behind uh, the math okay so we need to really make sure that we exactly know uh, if we have like a limit the small distance how small the distance is okay? so that's that's the, the question okay if we have this okay? Now it's not a line or linear equation, it's, it's a quadratic x squared. Okay? So the x squared, okay, as usual, we are start with uh, the statement, okay, the preliminary statement. So we start with if the distance x minus 3, okay, it will be having a delta, then the f of x minus l, l is 9. This will be less than epsilon. So we are going to somehow connecting and proving this x minus 3 with this x squared minus 9. Okay? And then find the correlations throughout the delta and epsilon. Okay? The first thing we can write that the x squared minus 9, fortunately we can factorize. Okay? We can factorize and becomes x plus 3 and x minus 3. Okay, so we can factorize this and we could write then this become this statement. Okay. If we look at this statement, what we are looking for is this x plus 3, right? If we could figure out this x plus 3, like maybe some, some number or some constant, then we can just use that statement for the x minus 3 because we have the, the same x minus 3 here, right? So no problem. So the, the question we need to, to find is x plus 3. How to find that? Let's just make assumptions first. Let's make assumptions. Assume there is a constant, let's say constant C, okay, such that the x plus 3 will less than this constant. So you could say that when we took this constant, we are going to have like this is going to be a constant or maybe it's constant <laughs> or we could say that uh, let me let me write maybe uh, going to here so this x plus three x minus 3 will be less than c x minus 3.
And we can make that C x minus 3 is less than epsilon so that the x minus 3 is less than epsilon over constant. So let's, let's just hold this for a moment. Okay. So perhaps, perhaps we can take a delta epsilon over C, but C is still, uh, still not sure what the number is that, that we want to find. Okay. So another assumptions that we need to make, so assume we restrict the x or uh, the distance um, x to be in, to be on interval centered at 3. <laughs> okay. Now, another assumption is that uh, we can restrict the distance, restrict the distance to be small, to be small enough. So imagine if this is centered at three, okay, let's say this three. Let's just imagine a small number, okay? Maybe the easy number that we are going to find is maybe just take the distance become one, okay? Let's say it's, 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 it's uh, the distance less than one. Okay? So, so X minus three, is less than one. It is our assumptions. Okay, our assumptions. Then from here, you could see the inequality that probably it will be in between two and four. And of course, it's if you see from here, it's between two and four. Okay. And then, if we plus this three, so plus three, so x plus three, this will be from five to seven. So at least we have the conditions that is x plus 3 is less than 7. So maybe 7 is good number for the constant, okay, for the constant. So let me write here, um, c equals 7 is good choice. Good choice. But we have now restrictions for x minus 3 and the other one. So let me put them right here. Let me write here. We assume first is x minus 3 is less than 1. And then perhaps this x minus 3 for this epsilon over c is less than epsilon over 7. So we have two, two options here. So to make sure that we are going to use this two statement, okay, to make sure we are going to use the statement, so taking the delta smaller than one and epsilon over seven, or we can write the terminology is delta mean interval from one to epsilon number seven. Sometimes in the future, when you have something, you have like interval and then you have mean or max, it means that it will take the smallest number from this interval. Or if taking max, then it will be taking the largest number from the interval. Okay. So 
So we are going to use this delta. Okay, let me move a little bit on the right here. Let me move here. Okay. So this, uh, the next part is showing the delta is working. So given that epsilon is positive and let the delta is equal mean one and epsilon over seven. So if we have uh, inequality zero less than x minus three less than delta, then x minus three less than one. Okay. Maybe let me put it around here. Let me put it around. And then we have the interval from two to four. And from here, we get that the x plus three is seven, right? If we plus three for all side here, we get this x plus three less than seven, okay? We also have that x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 7. So x squared minus 9, this will have x plus 3 and x minus 3. This will, um, maybe let me, this will less than, the x plus 3 is, this is 7, this is epsilon over 7. So we have 7 and epsilon over 7, and, and it become our epsilon. It become our epsilon. It become our epsilon. So we can write this, or therefore, limit x approaching 3 of x squared is equal now. Okay. okay up until here. I will move to the next section. We are going to have, uh, we have time, maybe examples next week about this precise definition of limit. And you can, uh, I think you can look at the definitions for the precise limit. Okay. And perhaps you will be maybe asking many questions how we, this is going to be that. And yeah, uh, it's a little bit weird. At the first glance, it will be weird, but this is a, a definition that we need to have to, to make sure that we, we are able to, uh, to correlate the definitions, which the limit, we say the limit, limit, right? Limit is closer to something, but how much or how close? Okay. So this is actually answering those questions okay, with the delta and epsilon. Okay. That is uh, symbolize the closeness of the limit. But if you think like in more practical way, of course, this is not really practical in engineering. This is for proofing, it's for proofing. Okay, we move to the next section. Okay. We are going to have maybe additional about this later on.
So we are going to move to continuity, okay? The continuity. Okay, continuity. First, we start with definitions, okay? Let me write, uh, let me draw a graph. It's a random graph, but uh, let me write a hole there. Okay. Okay, as we understood in limits, okay, if we have this, okay, let's say we have we have L, we have A. So as X approaching A from the right and approaching A from the left, it goes to have, let me write here, limit as X approaching A, we have left hand limit equal to right hand limit. This is equal L, right? Okay. In limit, we know for sure we can take the left, left limit and right limit. If they're both the same, we say that the limit exists in terms of L. Okay. But in the graph itself, okay, if we see the graph here, we have a hole. Right? We have a, a discontinuity. Okay? We say this, this discontinue. So continuity, discontinuity is uh, the simple way to understand this. If you write your graph with pen, when you draw your graph, whenever you take your pen, there will be a discontinuity. Okay. Okay. So if you have like maybe this, or you say we have the the infinite limit like that. This also taking a discontinuity. Okay. Because we are not going to be able to cross that border. Okay, in infinite limit, if you remember. So we may have removable discontinuity, we have infinite limit that makes our functions discontinue. So we cannot continue our, our drawings. Okay. So to make this continue, the hole, we need to remove the hole, okay, so that we can have close interval. Okay? We have a continuous function. So what does it mean? It means a function f is continuous at number a if the limit as x approaching a of the function of x is equal to its function at that point, okay? As simple as that. So this way, you are making your functions continuous. But remember, remember, remember all the requirements to make this uh, true. First is the function need to be defined. Okay, at this point. Okay, so first uh, requirement f of a is defined, of course. Okay, and the limit should be exists. Okay, and then you can make sure that the limit is equal with it, its function of a. Maybe let me give you the picture. Okay. And that's the continu continuity. Okay. 
and in some discontinuity that that might have uh, that might happen in, in, uh, in our problem is at least four four types okay a removable both are removable to the left one but the other one they have another defined uh, point okay but but we call this these two are removable discontinuity or a hole okay? these two here a hole uh, this hole here right and this is infinite discontinuity with the infinite limit okay so whenever you have a limit and it's going to have infinite value then we call it we'll be having a discontinuity and another part is we have jump discontinuity so we have it's well it, it doesn't need to be like this uh, it, integer functions but it can also be like you have this and then jump to here or maybe here uh, maybe here and then going down well precisely when you draw the graph you jump your hand okay that's uh, i think it's simply sim simple enough to understand But remember, okay, remember, the continuity need to be defined on the point, okay? If we say, if we say, this part here up until below this hole, we say it's still continuous, okay? This is still continuous, right? Still continuous. And from the right side, this is also still continuous. The one that makes this continuity is just the point. So we also can be can observe the continuity from one side, okay? from the left or from the right. Okay? So we can have that as well. So we can write uh, a function f is continuous from, let's say, from the right. A number a if limit and we write x approaching from the right of a f of x is equal to a and the same way is continuous from from the left at the same number a uh, I'm skipping some some words but it's the same thing that's the limit as x approaching a from the left is equal to f of x. And if you want to make more general in totality in the functions, you can say the function, let me write here, a function f is continuous on on an interval if it is continuous at every number in the interval okay i think it's easy to follow so it's just saying that if you want to make the statement to be true for in, in general. So if we have an interval, the continuous means that in every number, it should be having continuity, okay? So there will be no discontinuity in, in between those intervals, okay? And if you want to prove whether the function is continuous at, at some point, what we are going to do is we back to the first statement here, that the limit, should be equal to the function at that point. Okay? Need to be equal. If not equal, then there there will be some discontinuity. Okay. Okay. Another theorem for this continuity. Okay, I think I have a little, uh, see what I have. Okay, let me give you more theorem up, up until the end of class and we can review and get example next week. Okay? 
So if uh, f and g are continuous at a, c is constant, then the followings are also continuous. Continuous at A. So first is if we plus the function or minus. If we multiply with a constant, it should be still continuous. If we make a product with these two function fg, also continuous. And if you make a quotient between these two functions, well, we need to make sure that the g of a is not equal to zero. This one? Okay, now I would like to uh, give you some, some notes on, on this, um, this point here. Okay. I will give you some notes. Okay. If we have okay, F okay, is continuous, okay, let's say, over the interval from A to B, open interval, okay. we say F is continuous over every point in interval AB. Okay. I think that's easy to follow. But the second one, okay, the second one, if we say that F is continuous over the same AB, but it's closed interval, what's the difference? What's the difference? AB included. So, so okay, because it's included, we say here F is continuous over careful open interval a b and the n limit as x approaching a from the right is going to be f of a and limit x approaching b from the left is f of b okay okay it's it's, it's now it's more precise okay so if we need to include the interval a b we need to include the limit okay so that it can be in our uh, f of a and f of b okay? that should be equal okay? should be equal. so if we have f is continuous over a b uh, open interval that will be general 
But if we need to include a and b, then we need to include the one side limit that define f of a and f of b. Okay. Or if we want to draw, uh, this is precisely. So let's say this is a and b. This is let's say a. This is b. This is f of a, f of b. Okay. This is f of x. So this is saying that this is a from the right. This is b from the left. Okay. Okay. So, so I hope this can be really helpful okay, to to observe and analyze uh, functions. Okay. So, if you have an interval and you want to define the interval, if you can draw, maybe draw roughly drawing the graph. I, I think that will be better. Yeah, that will be better. Okay. And see where the the interval will be. Okay. Or you can assume or predict the intervals. That's also okay. And most of our uh, typical functions in our calculus in, 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 in this semester, they are all continuous on their domain. Remember the domain. So they will be continuous on their domain. So maybe example like the ln, when it's going to zero, of course it's going to be infinite, but we are excluding that, that part, right? It's, it's because that's not its domain. Okay, maybe one more theorem and then we can end our class and go to the feedback session. Okay. So one one more notes, one more notes. Just one more. So theorem. If F is continuous at B and limit as X approaching A um, of another function G. This is equal B, then limit as X approaching A of F, and we, we, we use the composite, we combine this G inside F, this will be equal to F of B. So we could write that limit as X approaching A, this will be equal F. And then limit. So we can move out the limit inside the composite. Okay, this is, I think, the last theorem for today. Uh, we are going to review uh, next week. And don't forget to check the homework I put in the Moodle in the same week with your TA. So it's, I think your TA give your homework also, right? And below that is my homework. I just uploaded this afternoon. Okay, let me stop this sharing. 
And let me share my second screen. Okay, sorry. I think I prepared three, I think three questions. The last part, uh, you need to have, I, I have some survey, just a one question. Yes, uh, later you will think. Okay. Okay, get ready. Are you ready to join? You can use the code if you want to use the website. If you if the QR code is not easy to scan, maybe you just use the uh, menti.com and enter the code. Okay. okay, get ready. Let's start. Okay. okay, use your student ID. Okay, I think we can start. Three, two, one. Let's start. I also don't, don't remember what the question. Uh, I think in the, in, you can see it from your phone. Yeah, I'm giving a, a around almost one and one and twenty one minutes twenty seconds. So compute the limit if it doesn't exist. Write D and E. I think see if you see it from. The screen is too small, but I think it's it's okay in your phone. <laughs> Remember the ex existence of limit. Okay. okay let's see. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, D and E. Is some of you one of didn't write no, but uh, sorry, you need to write the any. Okay. Who is Tinky? Tinky? Is it on this class? Tinky? <laughs> okay, if you can change, you can, you can change the name. Okay, get ready. The other question. Yeah, I prepared three. Okay, get ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, around two minutes, two minutes. I hope it's enough. I hope it's enough. I'm trying to push your uh your limits. <laughs> Hopefully it's it's sufficient the time. If not, then you can just choose random random answer.
the key is the same as we did the, in the exercise, but you need to do several times. <laughs> okay, go, go, go. Jayo, Jayo. <laughs> 25. <laughs> 20, 22, 21, 20. <laughs> Give up? Okay. <laughs> the key is rationalizing. Rationalizing. Okay. okay, let's see. Okay, good, good. Okay. Oh. Okay, okay. You have some luck. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, who is now the first one? Okay, still. <laughs> okay, okay. Get ready. The last question. Last question. Okay, get ready. Three, two, one. I also forget what question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I will maybe discuss the, the the last two questions next week and give you some tips if you have this question. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> okay, do you know how? Do you know how the last question? Do you know how? Using the squeeze theorem. Using the squeeze theorem. The squeeze theorem. Okay. You have sign in the power of E, right? The sign is in between what? Negative one and one. So E will be between one over E and E. And then you can multiply with the square of x, and then you will get that it will go through. The... Okay. Oh, change. Okay, okay, okay. Congratulations again. Win winning. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, I have some survey. Okay, I need you to give me some feedback so I can maybe improve in the more in the future. Okay. I need you to be to be honest. Okay, it's it's okay if you feel maybe I need to have it more improvement or maybe the TA also need to improve. I can discuss with the TA. If you agree, you need to go to the right. If you disagree, go to the left. Okay. 
And I would like to know whether we are too fast or, or maybe too slow. Because to be honest, I, I pre, uh, compare with the previous year, this is a little bit slow. A little bit slow. I'm trying to keep up with the students. Okay, I think uh, you have done all, right? Not yet. <laughs> Who's still writing this? If all already finished, then the last part will be, as usual, the ID and the um, suggestion for your attendance. Okay. Okay, if you finish your ID, then uh, finish the class. And thank you all for joining my class for today. Don't forget we have homework. And <laughs> we will prepare, I will prepare also the, the quiz, okay, the quiz. Okay, so yeah. yeah, see you, see you.